SNS versus SQS versus Event Bridge. Uh, this is a pretty popular topic for real world projects as well as interviews. Uh, I have done this comparison a couple years back. However, that is outdated. Until then, a lot of new features have been released. So in this video, I'm going to go over the comparison with all the relevant and latest features. So we are going to level set first, go over what is SNS, SQS, and EventBridge, and then we are going to compare those three services based on all these different factors. All right, so to level set, uh, SNS, it's a PubSub mechanism. A message is published to a topic, and then all the subscriber that subscribe to that topic will receive that messages. And SQS, as the name suggests, is a queuing system messages are put in a queue and then um, some AWS services or even on-prem services uh, can get those messages from the queue. And finally, event bridge is basically a event bus uh, where messages are sent to this event bus and then uh, can be consumed by multiple services. Now, the important thing to remember is SNS is a push mechanism, SQS is a pull mechanism, and event bridge is a push mechanism. So let's dive deeper here because that's the first comparison and a lot of my students as well as customer gets confused by this. So when we talk about Amazon SQS, there is a queue and there are messages. And remember that it's a pull mechanism. So any compute service can pull the messages. SQS is not pushing the messages to AWS services the services needs to come and read the messages. So what does that mean? It means that, let's say your application is running in uh, Amazon Elastic Kubernetes service. It can read from the SQS using the SDK and the credentials, not a problem. How about ECS? Sure. How about your applications running on EC2? Yep. And of course, Lambda. So the confusing part is um, when you create this integration with Lambda, it kind of appears that SQS is pushing the messages, uh, but that's not true. It's just AWS just made it easier with Lambda because the Lambda service constantly polls the queue to see if there are any messages. And if there are messages, then the Lambda service invokes your Lambda function and with the messages. Whereas if you implement uh, EKS, ECS, EC2 with the SQS, you need to do the polling. So AWS provides you the SDKs and the code for it, but you need to do it. So remember this, SQS is a pull mechanism. Now, if we switch to uh, SNS and even bridge, so the, for SNS, the, the messages are being published to a topic, and for event bridge, messages are being sent to a event bus. And the push means these two services can only push to AWS services that it has integrated with because the AWS service team needs to write code to integrate other AWS services because it's not onto you. You cannot run your applications on EC2 and try to read from this SNS or event bridge. Right, those, these two services need to push the messages. So some of the common integrated services are Lambda, and we are gonna go over some more. But if you are thinking, hey, my application is running in EC2, EKS, ECS, so is there no way for me to get those messages? There is, uh, both these services you can publish to a HTTPS endpoint, uh, but the endpoint needs to be public. Um, you cannot do a, within a VPC internal endpoint. And then the messages will go to EKS, ECS, EC2. But see, this is not very straightforward, not like SQS where EKS, ECS, EC2, uh, the applications running there can go directly consume the messages from SQS. Here, you need to pay for this HTTPS endpoint. So this could be either like a load balancer or API gateway, et cetera. And the integration, you need to do it. Okay, so that brings to the first comparison point, which is SNS targets Lambda, SQS, HTTPS endpoints, SMS, mobile push, email, data firehose, SQS, any compute service can read from SQS, Lambda has direct integration, 
And Evenbridge, Evenbridge has more integration than SMS. So Evenbridge targets 30 AWS services, Lambda, SQS, SMS, Kinesis Stream, Firehose, API Gateway, Step Function, etc. And Evenbridge also has third-party integration on the producer size. So if you are uh, sending messages from Datadog, Epsagon, etc., uh, Evenbridge makes it easy. Evenbridge knows how the message looks like, the schema, and it kind of guides you through the integration process. And more on the schema part uh, in a couple more slides. Message order, SNS, uh, FIFO maintains order. This was not possible before. SQS FIFO queue maintains order. Evenbridge message order is not maintained. So scaling and concurrency controls, SNS, service automatically scales. Uh, you can use Lambda per function concurrency setting to control downstream consumption. It's nearly unlimited uh, scaling uh, for standard SNS. For FIFO, there is a little limit, but that's also pretty high lookup if you need. SQS automatically scales as well. You can use Lambda trigger batch size setting and per function concurrency setting to control downstream consumption. Standard queue throughput is nearly unlimited. And even bridge service automatically scales automatically up with default soft quotas of 100,000 transaction per second for the producer part, which is put events, and around 19,000 transaction per second target invocations. And these are soft limits, so you can increase this and this varies by region. Uh, you can use Lambda per function concurrency setting to control uh, downstream consumption. All right, conditional message processing. This one is updated as well, so pay close attention. Previously, SNS can only invoke different subscriber based on values on message metadata. Before, SNS could not invoke different subscriber based on the actual values inside the message, right? So message metadata is the information attached to the message outside the message, basically. Uh, you can think of this as if you are sending someone a letter, so metadata is the address. It's not inside what you have written in the letter, but the address, whereas now SNS can also decide the invocation subscriber on what's written inside the letter or what's inside the message. So this is a big change. SQS cannot decide consumer based on message. You can combine this SNS SQS combination to do that. And even bridge, this is from the get go, even bridge can route messages to targets based on message. Uh, you can do detailed rule based message filtering, schema registry. So we are going to go over the schema in a little bit. And you can also download code bindings. And to show that in an example, let's say the message looks like this. And um, the category could be clothing, could be chemical. Uh, and then different uh, backend will process these messages. So both SNS and SQS can now look inside the message and let's say if the category is clothing, it can invoke Lambda 1, which processes the messages for clothing. And if it is chemicals, it can invoke Lambda 2, which can process chemicals. Next is message replay. This is also updated. Previously, only Evenbridge could archive messages uh, for infinite period and replay them. Now, SNS can also do that as well for 360, one year, which is pretty, pretty good. So for those of you who do not know this feature, so basically, uh, let's say for SQS, uh, you send a message to SQS and your application processes it. So those messages are gone from SQS. Now let's say uh, your application processes it in a test environment and something is wrong, like it processes it, but business logic is wrong. So you need to go and fix the code, of course, but then you also need to resend the message. If you want to test it out, you need to resend the same message to your SQS queue, and then uh, your application will process the messages. Whereas with SNS and even bridge, the messages could be archived. And let's say the same scenario, your application did something wrong, you fix it, and you just replay the messages. The producer does not need to resend the messages into SNS and Evenbridge. Uh, but this feature in SNS is only available for FIFO topics and not for all topics. 
Uh, so this is one of the superpower of event bridge. Uh, event bridge can automatically discover the message schema. Um, so let's say on the left, we have a message and event bridge can determine what fields are in the message uh, and what type it is. So you could see like the account, it says it's a string, detail type string, ID string, etc. The other advantage is gives you the code to parse the messages. Because it knows the schema, it can give you the code to read the messages and uh, process it. So that part, it makes it a little bit easier. Whereas with SNS and SQS, you need to know the schema and then you need to process it. And you can save all the schemas in a registry. This is what it looks like. So this is a schema registry uh, with different messages and their schemas. You can store all the schemas in a central location, so it makes it easier for new team member or other teams to come and check. You can download code bindings to use in code uh, quickly. Predefined schemas are available, which is very handy. So remember I talked about um, integration with third-party partners like Zendesk, PagerDuty, Datadog. With EventBridge, because you know the schema for those messages, it's easier for you to code, whereas with SNS SQS, you need to ask them, they will send you the schema, and then you need to code accordingly. So it makes it a little bit easier. Message transformation. SNS, you cannot transform the message. SQS, you cannot transform the message. Even bridge, you can transform messages before sending to target. So while the message is within the even bridge, the messages could be transformed. All right, let's go through a few more uh, factors. Durability. In short, SNS, SQS, EventBridge, they all replicate the messages while the message is in their service into multiple availability zones uh, in a region. So pretty much uh, your messages are durable. Uh, so even if one AZ goes down, your message will still be safe. Encryption and compliance. SNS and SQS have an upper hand there. Uh, SNS and SQS support both AWS managed and customer managed KMS. Uh, while the messages are at rest in the service. Even Bridge only supports AWS managed uh, CMKs. Pricing, there is a little bit difference in the pricing as well as the pricing factors. Uh, SNS SQS is a little bit cheaper, uh, uh, but SNS SQS is built for 64 kilobyte chunk of data, whereas Even Bridge is uh, built for 256 kilobyte chunk of data. Uh, I just want to go real quick on this event bridge, uh, custom and cross account events on SaaS and same account events. Uh, so I'll start with the free one. Uh, so AWS events are events that your AWS services emit. So let's say you create AC2, you stop AC2, you terminate AC2, you delete AC2. All these are AWS events and they can be trapped using event bridge event bus. So for the same account, those kind of events, event bridge is free. Uh, the SaaS is third party uh, partners that are uh, integrating with event bridge. We went through it, Gendesk, uh, Datadog, etc. Custom events are the actual business events. Remember the example I gave, the messages that the one application is sending to another applications. So those are custom events and cross account events, pretty self-explanatory uh, messages coming from another AWS account. Persistence for SNS, there is out of the box, there is no formal persistence. It will keep on retrying for 23 days. SQS, uh, the default messages are stored for four days, but you can modify it to as little as 60 seconds up to 14 days by configuring this message retention period attribute. Uh, event bridge, no formal persistence model, it will keep on trying. Uh, and then after uh, 24 hours, it will not persist the messages. So hold up, hold on your thought, right? So you are thinking, uh, what about DLQ? Yes. Uh, so both SNS, so all the SNS, SQS, even bridge handles DLQ. Couple of things to keep in mind that I uh, tell my customers. So let's say with SNS, uh, you have set up message filtering and even bridge you have set up message filtering. One common problem I see is Sometimes a message does not satisfy none of the rules. And remember, if none of the rules are satisfied, 
So after 23 days, the message could go to a real queue, which is SQS queue. Same thing for event bridge after 24 hours. Uh, best practice is you create a catch all rule for SNS and event bridge. So even if no rules are satisfied, there is a catch all rule. Uh, you can process the message and you can create an alert so that you don't have to wait these 23 days or 24 hours to know that, hey, messages are not being processed and being sent to DLQ. Uh, SQS, a little bit different. It has this concept of visibility timeout. Also remember SQS is a pull mechanism. So if the message is pulled, uh, but then is not processed successfully, it can be rolled back to the queue. Whereas for SNS event bridge, there is no rolling back. As soon as the message is delivered, uh, they are gone. So which one should you choose? Well, go through all the factors, right? Does your message order need to be maintained? Um, does it need to be encrypted using a customer managed keys? Or uh, does it need to be read from an application code running in uh, EC2, right? What are the scaling requirement? Uh, what is the cost factors, all that stuff. Uh, so use all of this to determine. Also, if you like this video, this video is part of my serverless course. Uh, so take a look, all the courses are on maximum discount this week. Uh, that is a great way to support me and this channel. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye.